Well, hello, good evening, and welcome to the live program uh, here tonight. Coming to you from uh, Cambridge, England, that is where I'm broadcasting from. A warm welcome to you wherever you are around the world. Uh, whether you're watching uh, live tonight with me or you're watching a recording, whichever way, God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to take a moment to uh, share the broadcast. Press that share button. And don't forget to make use of the comment section and things like that as we go through. Uh, it's always good to hear, you know, to see people's comments and that sort of thing. So God bless you and welcome uh, to the programme. It's lovely to be here again. Now we're going to continue on in our journey together through the book of Acts. And tonight will be Acts chapter 19 is where we're going to be. I can see uh, Ben Skinner there. God bless you, Ben. And Carolyn Gerrels over in Sonora. California, USA. God bless you, Carolyn. Thank you for tuning in. God bless you, Ben. I happen to know Ben is in England, so God bless you, Ben. But if you're just tuning in, remember, type your location, say hello, tell me where you're viewing from tonight and press that share button if you're able to as well. Carol McCrory, good evening to you, Carol, whom I happen to know as well is in Northern Ireland. So God bless you, Carol. So we've got USA, England, Northern Ireland at the moment. Um, so God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Um, just a reminder, I do this at the beginning of each program, but I have a group called the, um, the Acts of the Apostles. And you can join that group quite easily. If you go back in my on my profile page, about five or six posts, you will see the joining... Um, page for the Acts of the Apostles group. So do join that group and then any of the programs, you'll find them in there. Ailey McLeod in Invergordon, Scotland. Uh, God bless you there tonight. David, thank you for sharing. Uh, good to see you as well, David Redding. Um, so Acts chapter 19, uh, that's where we're going to be. Um, and uh, look forward to uh, getting There's some interesting things in this tonight. There really is. Um, I love the book of Acts. There's just so much goes on. The Acts or the Adventures of the uh, of the Apostles would be a good name for it as well, wouldn't it? Because there's so many supernatural and incredible things take place. And it gives you such a confidence in the gospel. And how, remember, the, all of these guys were going to places that never heard the gospel before. And yet they broke through and penetrated with the word of God. And great signs and wonders and miracles happened. Many, many thousands and people um you know came to faith in jesus so there was a lot going on uh, in, in those days and uh, you know the book of acts itself it's never closed does it really i mean all right we've got 28 chapters in what we call the acts of the apostles but that book has never closed the acts of the body of christ have continued on ever since the last chapter of acts right up to the present day and uh, and will continue on until the coming of the Lord Jesus, if you like, because the acts of the, you know, the church, the body of Christ is is continuous, isn't it? Throughout all these centuries that have gone past since those days, you know. So anyway, uh, let's get into uh, God's word here tonight. And um, but God bless you live or on the recording, whatever it is. Good to see you. All right. OK. Oh, Deanna Morgan. God bless you. Nice to see you, too, as well. Anybody else that's out there in the background? You haven't said hello yet or oh, haven't typed your name. You know, I'm uh, giving your location. Why don't you do that? Say hi. Type location. It's always good to do. Right. OK. So Acts chapter 19. That's where we are tonight. Let's get underway here. So it says, so while Apollos, uh, I'm reading actually from the AMPC version, which is the amplified version, the classic amplified. So AMP for amplified, C for classic. Um, I think it's a good version. It, it gives quite a bit of detail. It's helpful. Uh, but, you know, you use whatever version of the Bible that you are able to understand and you get something out of it. I mean, that's the that's the thing. So while Apollos was in Corinth, Paul went through the upper inland districts and came down to Ephesus and there he found some disciples. Um, perhaps say a little bit more about Ephesus, but Ephesus is a very important city indeed. Very, very, very important city. Uh, perhaps I'll do the rest. I'll do some background of Ephesus in a little while. 
But Paul's found some disciples and he said to them, they said, did you receive the Holy Spirit uh, when you believed on Jesus as the Christ? And they said, no, we did not even know that, that we haven't heard that there is a Holy Spirit. And he asked, well, what baptism then? Uh, into what baptism were you baptized? Into what faith and name were you baptized into? And they said to him, well, um, you know, we, we, we were baptized into John's baptism. Now, John the Baptist, of course, was uh, uh, baptizing people in order for repentance, uh, uh, you know, and all of that kind of thing. And um, but uh, and it says this. And Paul said, well, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, verse four, continually telling the people that they should believe in one who was going to come after him. And that is Jesus. So having, uh, you know, so on, well, once people heard this, when they heard that uh explanation uh, from Paul um, they were baptized again this time in the name of the Lord Jesus now so they've now been baptized uh, they've repented previously but they haven't been baptized in the name of Jesus but then there's a key thing that takes place here as well let's not miss this so on hearing this they were baptized again in the name of the Lord Jesus and it says now as Paul the apostle laid his hands upon them the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. So now they've been baptized in the name of Jesus and the apostles laid his hands upon them. And then they have received the Holy Spirit and they began to speak in tongues and they've also began to prophesy. So they'd repented previously. And John would have said, you need to believe in Jesus. They'd done all that. But they hadn't received the Holy Spirit, obviously, because if they had have done, and even when they were baptized in the name of Jesus, if they had received the Spirit, then Paul wouldn't have had to lay his hands upon them for them to re then to receive the Holy Spirit. You see what I'm saying? So, um, and okay, you can only go uh, by what the text uh, is saying. You know, so so that's what happened to them. Uh, they got baptized again in the name of Jesus. Paul laid his hands upon them. They got filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke in tongues. And then they prophesied. And there was about 12 of them in all. And he went into the synagogue, Paul did. And for three months, he spoke boldly, proclaiming and arguing about the kingdom of God. So again, we see a very similar thing. Hello, Daphne. Uh, we see a very thing, similar thing going on here. Paul has gone into a city. He then goes into the synagogue and he begins to debate with them. He begins to preach Jesus as the saviour, as the Messiah. And that's what take, uh, takes place. And this is what Paul does in every city that he goes to. Initially, he goes into the synagogue and begin, uh, begins to preach. I mean, there is a scripture that says that first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. Um, and so that's kind of what he's doing. Um, I'm not going to last very long by the look of it. But anyway, so for three months, he's been doing this anyway in the synagogue. He says, but when some became more and more stubborn and began to speak evil of the way of the Lord before the congregation, uh, Paul separated himself from them, taking disciples with him. And he went on daily holding discussions in the lecture room of Tyrannus. Uh, and my Bible here says from about 10 o'clock until three in the afternoon. So there was these lecture halls of Tyrannus. This is not a Jewish. It's not a synagogue. Um, from from what I've tried to understand about it, they're either they either belong to somebody called Tyrannus or there was some sort of school of Tyrannus that was in there. And when they weren't using it, Paul was using it. They often went earlier in the morning to these type of schools and philosophy classes and stuff there in Ephesus because it was cooler in the day and everything else. And then later on, it seems that maybe Paul took over either late morning or, or in the morning or into the afternoon when it was hotter, when they were all having the siesta, when they were all out avoiding the hot sun and things like that. And so but anyway, Paul did this um, holding these things for Every single day, it says daily they were meeting. I mean, that's one of the things that you notice. It's very different about the early church, isn't it? That very often we read descriptions of what they were doing was on a daily basis. There was daily practicing of the faith. There was daily doing of things. I mean, yes, um, they would go into the synagogue on the Sabbath, 
uh, do that as well. But there was very often things happening every day. Um, whereas, and that's true for lots of places around the world. In the West, it has become more of a Sunday morning thing or Sunday evening or midweek Wednesday service or maybe a Friday night thing. But to, to, to have seven days a week church would be unusual here in Europe and also in the United States and Canada um, or places like Australia. and It would be very unusual for that to be the place. And perhaps our, that's our mistake, isn't it? That we've got a bit of a part time faith going on here, you know, where now we would all say, well, yes, but I, I talk to God every day at my home and I pray and I do these things. And absolutely, you know, and that's the right thing to do. But it seemed like there was so much of a hunger for God that they would meet every single day in a lot of these places. They, they, they actually didn't want to miss a day. They would be meeting every day of the week um, and, and gathering together. So that's what it says here. And I think that is something we need to learn, isn't it? As the church in the West, because many other places around the world, the church meets every day. They get gather and pray every day. They do things every day. Amen. Uh, and after all, people are, uh, you know, going to hell every day. So maybe we need to pray every day. Maybe we need to preach the gospel every day. Maybe we need to have meetings every day. You know, all that kind of stuff. So, 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 so do you know? Do you know what I mean? Good evening, uh, Brenda as well, and Dave just uh, joined us there. Dave LeBlanc over in France. There, hello, hello, Rene. <laughs> God bless you, Dave. Um, so every single day they're meeting in the lecture halls of uh, Tyrannus. And um, God bless you, Matthias, as well. Good to see you, brother. Uh, so they're, they're doing this every day. Now, what goes on here to say something else is quite interesting as well. Verse 10, it says, and this continued for two years. So every day for two years, that's 730 days, isn't it? <laughs> if you take it exactly. Uh, they continued on for two years. And this is now listen to what this says. So that all the inhabitants of the province of Asia, both Jews and as well as Greeks, heard the word of the Lord about salvation through Jesus Christ. Now, let me just qualify that just a little bit here. Because that's what I was going to say earlier. And I was, I was just just waiting for that, really. When it says in the um, province of Asia, that's the Roman province of Asia, which is basically um, Western Turkey, what modern day Turkey now, Western Turkey. It's not talking about the continent of Asia, the whole great big continent of Asia. That's not what's being referred to here. It's talking about but the Roman province of Asia, as it was known in those days. And of course, Ephesus was... Um, really the most prominent city in that province. It wasn't the capital. The capital actually was Pergamum. You know, where it talks about in the seven churches in Book of Revelation, that Pergamum, where the seat of Satan was, Jesus talked about that and all that business. But nonetheless, Ephesus really was the most important city, despite it, the fact that it wasn't the capital. It was um, the most populous city in that province uh, and the whole province itself was the most prosperous and the most populated province in the Roman Empire. So it's very significant uh, here is Ephesus. Um, so but that's the distinction there. It's not the continent, but it's the province of Asia. Well, in any case, um, now when it says that um, that all of the Jews and uh, all of the Greeks heard the word of the Lord about salvation through Jesus in that province. We're talking about two million people there. There was approximately two million people lived in that region at that time. So I don't know if that's the thing, but it's saying everybody in Asia, in the province of Asia, whether Jew or Greek, heard about Jesus and his, uh, salvation through them. And that could equate to two million people. It's a staggering statistic. But again, again, the Apostle Paul had an incredible ministry. And we know that absolutely powerful ministry. Later on, 
uh, different people came and ministered in Ephesus as well. Um, people like um, Aquila. We heard about Priscilla and Aquila having a church in their house and all the rest of it. And how they got kicked out of Rome and how the Apostle Paul met them in Corinth on the last program. Um, so Aquila there, Apollos came and preached in Ephesus and the Apostle John, you know, Jesus is closest disciple he came to Ephesus as well so a lot went on and it was a real hub of the early church Ephesus really really was the apostle John um, lived outside of Ephesus on a hillside I think I believe is correct um, he eventually got you know he got sent to the Isle of Patmos and other things happened but I think he eventually retired back to when he got off of Patmos back to Ephesus this house near Ephesus and that's where he passed out his days living in the hills just outside of the city of Ephesus. That's what I think. I think I'm right in saying that. And that's the Apostle John, the only one of the initial uh, apostles not to be martyred, even though they boiled him in oil and tried to kill him. But he miraculously survived. That's why they sent him to the Isle of Patmos, because uh, they were trying to get rid of him and it wasn't really working. So <laughs> there we go. Andrew Duncan as well. God bless you. Mary Cobb, bless you too. Uh, welcome to the programme. So here we are in this very prosperous city, in a very prosperous and populated region of Ephesus. That's where we are. And the word of the Lord is being preached for over two years by the Apostle Paul with an incredible impact. OK, we're going to see now one of the reasons why uh, perhaps such an impact uh, was taking place uh, because of the ministry of the Apostle Paul. Because it's one thing to say that they, they heard the word of the Lord. Um, it's, it's another thing here uh, to see what happened as well. And so capture this verse 11, an amazing scripture here. Uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 11. Now, of course, many of you will have heard this before. But look at this. It says, and God did unusual and extraordinary miracles by the hands of of Paul. So here's here's one of the reasons why I think the word of God was spreading so much in that region and so many people came to visit no doubt because incredible unusual um extraordinary miracles were taking place through the ministry of the apostle Paul. Uh, and you've got to know in antiquity when people heard about it's such a densely populated area that word traveled very, very quickly. And, and these incredible miracles that were taking place and we don't have um, too much information as to what they were. But the writer of the book of Acts, Luke, goes to the trouble of calling them unusual and extraordinary miracles taking place. Now, we get a little bit of a. Uh, idea of, of how it was taking place as well and this is one of the incredible things about this ministry here as well and this could be why so many people heard when you hear the next bit here as well um a bit like tonight you know i'm, I'm sitting here in england I'm, I'm i'm speaking to you about the word of god and it's going all over the world here because of the medium of uh facebook and you know the internet well, there was another way of carrying things out and getting them done as well in Paul's day. And we're about to see that here right now. So remember the context. Unusual, extraordinary uh, miracles are taking place by the hands of Paul. It says so that handkerchiefs or towels or aprons that had touched his skin were carried away and placed upon the sick and their diseases left them and evil spirits came out of them now just think about that so people get touch cloths and things you know handkerchiefs whatever they could get against the body of Paul and then they would send them off to a sick relative somewhere who knows it might be hundreds of miles away they would receive this prayer cloth if you like and then as soon as it was laid on the individual sickness would leave their body and demons would come out of people so yeah, that type of thing um, taking place is going to get the attention of people all over the province, isn't it? You're going to hear about this when blind people are receiving their sight, where cripples are getting off of their bed, where lepers are being cleansed, 
uh, where demons are being cast out of crazy people or people are afflicted in the area in their life, all through these cloths, man, you've got to know. And of course, people that experience that or heard about that say they're going to say I'm going to go to Ephesus I'm going to see what's going on in Ephesus I am going to go and see this guy Paul and see what's going on and see what God is doing he would wouldn't you you know um and no television in those days in the internet you know when something extraordinary like this is taking place you have to know that is going to get around you see in the ministry of Jesus, people are dragging people from all over that part of the world to come and meet Jesus up some random mountain somewhere. And they're bringing and dragging the sick with them because they've heard this Jesus of Nazareth, he's working miracles. He can do something about it. We need to get some help. And so, you know, it's the same thing. Word spreads pretty quickly. Just like it did with Jesus. And just like it did with the, the Apostle Peter. We saw that in Acts um, chapter five, uh, when people heard that Peter was coming and they were carrying the sick in from neighboring places and everything, laying them in the street, just wanting Peter to walk past them because the power of God was moving so great through the life and ministry of the apostle Peter. So again, extraordinary thing. So these miracles are taking place uh, and demons are coming out of people. Um, interesting thing takes place. So, so people are hearing of this. Um, in those days, it wasn't unusual um, to have exorcists, people that went around casting out spirits out of people. I mean, the evil spirits. I mean, that kind of went on. A lot of those were Jewish people as well doing this. Um, and what they would do a lot of the time is, is they would, you know, try to use a spirit that was more powerful than the one that was in the person to cast that one out of the person. And, and so that's kind of what um, some of these exorcists, they would invoke the name of a certain demon who was higher than the one that was in the person to get, and that demon would cooperate with these, um, a lot of these Jewish exorcists and magicians and people like this and cast out the spirit, drag it out of the, of the individual. Because of course, these demons, they wanted to be used. They wanted to be, um, they seem to enjoy that kind of thing so that they got prominence with the person that they were working with. You know, so that was kind of the background of some of this. So people thought that they could go around and do things uh, and in this manner. So anyway, some traveling Jewish exorcists also undertook to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits. So they've heard that the, Paul is doing this and they think, well, we're going to have a go at this as well. So they went there saying, I solemnly charge you by the by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. This is what they were doing. This is what they were saying. Um, and they would say that type of stuff. Now, seven sons of a certain Jewish chief priest named Sceva were out and about doing this kind of work. But one evil spirit uh, replied to them and said, Jesus, I know. And Paul, I know. Um but who are you? This spirit did not recognize the authority of these people at all. You see, Paul was anointed by God and commissioned to do the work that he was called to do and authorized to use the name of Jesus. These people weren't. And then when they turn up and try and do this, let's see what happens. But the evil spirit says, I don't know who you are. And then the man in whom the evil spirit was living leapt on them. Uh, mastering two of them, and he was so violent against them that they dashed out of the house in fear, stripped naked and wounded. They got a right beating from this demonized man because they did not have the authority to do what they were doing. Amen. So I hope you're all listening here. You seem to be having a sub-conversation about cakes here or something. So uh, um, anyway, so... These guys got beaten senseless and the whole world spread all around that these exorcists got attacked by the demon possessed man and they couldn't do what the Apostle Paul was doing. There's a great there's a divide here now, isn't it, between Paul and these other guys. Um, and this became known uh, to all that lived in Ephesus about this. 
both Jews and Greeks, and alarm and terror fell on them, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So, you know, this has had quite a stir. Again, you know, supernatural, spiritual things taking place in the city was obviously, um, you know, high on people's agenda. When they hear these things, it goes around. Um, so, after this, the effect of that was, the unusual effect, that many of those who are now believers came making full confession and thoroughly exposing their former evil practices. And many of those who have practiced curious magical arts collected their books and their amulets and so on and so, and they throw them onto a big pile and then they set light to them. And it was found out to it mounted to about 50,000 pieces of silver, the value of all of this magic witchcraft paraphernalia that they burnt in the street. Amen. Now, uh, 50,000 silver pieces represents um, about 50,000 work days. Because apparently a silver piece was about a day's wage. And so it's like 50,000 days of work representing this pile of all of this magic stuff that has been burnt now in the street. So you notice when people become true believers, they don't hang on to their witchcraft items. They don't hang on to their fetishes, their charms, their amulets around their neck, their bracelets, their rings, their books, their funny outfits, you know, things like that. No, no, no. They didn't hang on to that stuff. They took it and they burnt it in the street. And as you can see, it had a value uh, to, you know, it had, it had commercial value. Um, but they knew that once they became a believer, they had to separate themselves absolutely and completely from all of this witchcraft paraphernalia and everything else. And so therefore, all of this stuff was burnt in the street. Can I uh, encourage you tonight, if you're listening to me, whether you're live or on the recording, if you have anything like that in your home, I implore you to get it out of your house. And um, and truly, uh, you know, and I'm sorry that even if your sainted mother gave you uh, some occult type ring on her deathbed and said, wear this always and you feel compelled with that. It's the right thing to do to get rid of it. Amen. Don't let something like that, an emotional attachment or it was an old relationship and you're still hanging on to the old engagement ring you had from somebody else from years ago. And some of these things have negative spiritual connotations. They're not even witchcraft. You know, so you want to get rid of that kind of stuff. But you've got any of that stuff in your house at all. You've got statues of horrible figurines, you know, um, totally demonic, um, you know, maybe video games or CDs, uh, DVDs, books, things like that. Uh, get rid of it. I, I can remember going into a pastor's house once and he had this great big thing to the god Osiris of Egypt on, on his dining room wall. I said, what you got that in your house for? And he said, oh, we picked it up on holiday in Egypt or even on honeymoon or something. And I said, you need to get that out of your house, mate. Because that's demonic. It's got a curse on it. Get it out of your home. I don't think he ever did. Um, you know, so um, it was really. I bought tarot cards today from the shop. Should I use them? Oh, my goodness me. Uh, if you're serious, Ailey, um, no. If you really did buy tarot cards today, uh, you need to get them out of your house, preferably burn them in the back garden or something. If you've got an old dustbin or something burn them um but or, or at a minimum rip them all to pieces and throw tie them in a bag or something and throw them in the bin but never touch things like tarot cards ouija boards astrology crystals all of these things what they do is these articles of um divination and things like that they connect you to a spirit a demon that's behind it and then you bring a curse upon your life so you really, really need to get rid of those things. Um, you might as well have a hotline to the devil with tarot cards. I mean, seriously, I would not allow those things across my uh, on my property. I can tell you that. Um, so absolutely, Ailey, if you have got cat, um, tarot cards, you need to get rid of them as fast as you possibly can. So after the program, I suggest you tear them into bits 
and put them in a bin and put them in a, in a local um, dustbin or something, you know, a waste a litter bin or something. But get rid of them or burn them if you possibly can. Burning would be better um, because they are so demonic and there will be evil spirits associated with those cards 100%. And my question to you would be, Ailey, do you want to bring evil spirits into your house and for them to have a legal right to oppress you and come against you? You won't find any truth in tarot cards. There, it, that is a, a, a form of divination, a form of witchcraft type stuff. And absolutely, you get rid of that. And if anybody else is listening to me on the programme, whether you're on with me live now today or, or in fact, you know, you're watching the recording, get all of that junk out of your house. Doesn't matter how much it's worth in money. Get rid of it and bin it. Burn it if possible. But if not, then destroy it. Put it in a bag, tie it right up three several bags and throw it in the tip. But get rid of it and make sure people can't use it after you've gotten rid of it as well. OK, I'm not going to say any more of that, but you see quite clearly here that anybody involved with those things um, they got rid of all of that stuff um, in Ephesus. They got rid of it. Now they would wear little amulets around their neck um, with magic little scrolls inside with words written on them. Um, they were called Ephesata Grammata or something. And they would have these things around their necks and stuff like that, all bringing a curse, all connecting them under the control of a demon and stuff like that break it off, get rid of it. I don't know if you've ever seen any of the great crusades of uh, the German evangelist Reinhard Bonker in Africa, but often they would have a big oil drum at the side of the stage or several oil drums and all the people would come and take all of their juju and their fetishes and their charms and stuff and throw it uh, into um, the bin to be burnt right uh, there and there. So don't have anything uh, to do with those things uh, at all. And you will bless your own life if you get rid of them. Um, you know. Ailey says, I have a burning bin outside. I will do it right now. Yeah, go do it, sister. You'd be better off getting rid of them than watching the programme, to be honest. Go out and dump it and come back. Um, you know. What is the status of water divining? <laughs> well... You know, water witchy, water divining. I don't know. I'll leave that to you to think about that. But again, it's probably not the best idea in the world. Um, anyway, let's move on. But we've got the idea. I mean, anything like that in the household or whatever, just, you know, get rid of it and stop practicing these things. I mean, it's easy as well. Um, you know, people don't necessarily know or understand what they bought or what they're doing. So, you know, that's why we need to explain uh, to people, um, you know, Ailey said, I don't know what provoked me to buy them. I won't worry about it, Ailey. Just get rid of the things. Don't worry. Don't overanalyze it too much. We can all make a mistake or we can do something because, you know, we don't realize uh, something. So, you know, um, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Just get rid of it and just stick to your Bible and stuff like that. Don't get into all these other extra things. OK, so all these people anyway. One of the things that people did as well was apparently when they confessed uh, their sins and they confessed the, the spells um, that they had been done, that, that drained the power out of them as well, apparently. Um, so that was another reason why they were confessing it and getting rid of it and all the rest of it. Um, but there would have been a time that many of us might have done something like that. And even in even being Christian, some people don't realize some of these things are wrong and they don't know. So let's not be hard on Ailey or rude or anything like that, because, you know, any of us can do something and not realize, you know, what I mean, but the good news is, is that she only got them today. And immediately we came onto a program and God was highlighting it so that she knew to get rid of them. So praise God that he was there here today, wasn't he, to illustrate that to our sister. And so she knew to get rid of them. So again, the devil tried to sort of slip uh, his way into something. And um, <laughs> he's been exposed tonight and now he loses because our sister Ailey is going to get rid of them. So let, let's, let's, let's move on from that sort of a subject now uh, anyway. So it says, you know, in, in verse 20 then, so thus the word of the Lord uh, concerning Jesus Christ and eternal salvation 
um, prevailed mightily there in Ephesus. Now, after these events, uh, Paul determined uh, in the Holy Spirit that he would travel through Macedonia and Achaia. Achaia is sort of most of and Macedonia is most of Greece and go to Jerusalem saying, after I've been there, I must visit Rome also. And so having um, sent out two of his assistants, Timothy and Erastus, into Macedonia, uh, he himself stayed on in the province of Asia uh, for a while. Um, oh, perhaps I'll do that in a, in a moment. Yeah, OK, so for a, a man named. Um, so as time went on, though, no, uh, there arose a no small disturbance concerning the way of the Lord. So all of a sudden there's been sort of a trouble. Has started to break forth. Um, here uh, and it says that a man named Demetrius a silversmith who made silver shrines of the goddess Artemis brought no and this brought no small income to his craftsmen so um, they would have these guilds of craftsmen where there were people who worked together um, and and they are building shrines uh, to 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 sell um, and uh, that's what they're doing here in Ephesus. Um, and this guy, uh, Demetrius, you know, he worked with other people and they're making quite a bit of money out of this. Now, why would that be the case? Well, Ephesus was a centre of the cult of Artemis um, called Diana and some other places. And there was a big temple there to um, Artemis in Ephesus. In fact, there was many other sort of subdivisions of this as well, all around the Mediterranean from this cult of Artemis in Ephesus. Um, the temple of um, Artemis was 350 feet long and 150 feet wide. And, uh, you, 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 you know, you may have already um, known, uh, you know, through history at school and stuff when you were younger, they, they used to talk about the seven wonders of the world in the ancient world, you know, the pyramids being one, wasn't it? Well, this temple of, of, of Artemis was considered one of the seven wonders of the world. And so you could and imagine um, all of the traffic around it. And there was a lot of sub industry coming off this idolatrous shrine. Apparently, Artemis would send you know, the demon associated with this big temple as well. Many followers would have visions and they were, and they and they knew that, that that they were to spread the cult, and they would go to different places and try and establish uh, the cult of Artemis in other places, and that's why there's at least thirty three places around the Mediterranean where um, this was the case. So um, anyway, and uh, so it's just a little bit of background uh, for you there. So anyway, he called together. A, workmen of similar trades and said men are you acquainted with the facts and understand that from this business we derive our wealth and our livelihood now you notice in here that not only at Ephesus but all over the province of Asia Paul has persuaded and induced people to believe his teaching and has alienated a considerable company of people saying that gods that are made with human hands are not really gods at all so again, you have now this guy who's not a believer saying this Paul all over Asia, he has been persuading people to go away from their traditional gods and saying gods made with our hands are no gods at all. Hallelujah. Hi, Ellen. And he said, and, and then he says to them in this in verse 27. So now there is a danger, not merely that this trade of ours may be discredited, but also that the, the temple of the great goddess Artemis may come into disrepute and count for nothing and that her glorious magnificence may be degraded and fall into contempt. She whom all the province of Asia and the wide world worship. Wow. So they're really hamming it up here. Pretty big style. But you can see the effect that this temple, this seventh wonder of the world temple here had upon the region until 
the Apostle Paul camped himself there for two years and began to preach Jesus there and shook the entire region. Uh, so much so that now all these people are getting up in arms about it, obviously because they were getting less customers, I would say, people wanting to buy off of them. Anyway, so it says this. So as they listened to this, they were filled with rage and they continued to shout, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. And um, and then the city was filled with confusion and they rushed together into the amphitheater. Uh, now, the amphitheater was an open air theater, a huge place, um, over 500 feet in diameter, this big open air theater at Ephesus. And it could hold, it could seat, I, I believe, 25,000 people. So this is a big, big thing. OK. And so they... They dragged along with them Gaius and Aristoc Aristocrus, <laughs> Mas and Macedonians who were fellow travellers with Paul. So two of Paul's mates have been dragged into the theatre. Paul wished to go in among the crowd, but the disciples would not permit him to do so. There's such a furore going on. There's a riot, There's a riot happening, basically. And some of the Asiarchs or political religious officials in Asia who were his friends also sent him and warned him not to risk venturing into the theatre. These were these um, Asia arcs were like uh, officials, um, uh, very well high up officials and often would be presiding in the in the theatre and stuff. And they said, Paul, don't come in here. They said, keep him out. Don't let him in because they feared that the, the crowd would kill him. Literally. I mean, this is there's so much disorder uh, going on. Because these workers that sell these idols have gone berserk. They're losing money. Paul is winning uh, all of the city to Jesus. And they're getting less and less trade. And they're losing their money. And, and the devil's stirring it all up. And so there's a real big... There's a, there's a riot uh, ensuing here uh, in a big way. Um, so anyway, so now some shouting one thing and some shouting another. For the gathering was in a tumult. And most of them did not even know why they'd come together. Some of the crowd called upon Alexander to speak since the Jews had pushed and urged him forward. And Alexander motioned with his hand, wishing to make a defence and planning to apologise uh, to the people. Um, but as soon as they saw him and recognised that he was a Jew, a shout went up from them as the voice of one man for about two hours and they cried out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians. So you can imagine thousands of people for two solid hours were shouting out, great is Artemis of the Ephesians, which I do not believe is great. But anyway, I don't even like saying the sentence, really, but I'm merely quoting what the scripture says. Um, and this, so the, there's a real, real big stronghold there that Paul has come right up against with his preaching and everything for over two years. And now it's culminated, it's come to a head and there's all of this going on. And when the town clerk had calmed the crowd down, he said, men of Ephesus, what man is there who does not know that the city of Ephesus is guardian of the temple of the great Artemis? And of the sacred stone, an image of her that fell from the sky. Now, lots of uh, different people. Um. It's not different people, different cities had so-called um, effigies or idols or gods that fell from the sky. Now, they might well have been a meteorite or something like that. Um, but there were certain places that claimed that things that fell from the sky and they would say this is the gods or a representation of the god uh, or whatever. So, um, you know, this was uh, certainly a thing, this sacred stone. That they claimed was Artemis actually come down from the heavens, you know, probably just a meteorite or something like that. But however, this this was a thing that they believed. Um, now, seeing then <clears throat> that these things cannot be denied, you ought to keep quiet and not do anything rashly. For you have brought these men here who are guilty of neither temple robberies nor blasphemous speech about our goddess. Now then, if Demetrius and his fellow tradesmen who are with him have a grievance against anyone, the courts are open and the proconsuls are available. This is the ruling Roman authorities. Let them bring charges against one another legally. But if you require, if you require anything further about this 
or about other matters, it must be decided and cleared up in the regular assembly, for we are in danger of being called to account and accused of rioting because of this commotion today and there being no reason that we can offer to justify this. When he said these things, he dismissed the assembly. It was a very grave thing for a, a, a city of people to be accused of rioting and disorder uh, and, and all the rest of it. So, you know, wisely this man, because Rome could send in more forces to quell rebellion. There could be all sorts of executions and different things going on. You know, this is not uh, something that you really uh, want to consider. Um, and some cities had lost their Roman status through riot and things like that. They take away their privileges. There was all sorts of reasons uh, round why uh, these things wouldn't necessarily be the case. You want it to happen. Um, so, you know, that's that. Now let me have a look. What's this Ailey is saying? Uh, there's black smoke coming from the car. Uh, there. Right, that's the tarot cards burning right now in the outside bin. I've shared a burning photo to my Facebook to tell people not to buy them. I feel better that they are burning. Hallelujah. Well, they're burning. Um, you know, no matter what colour the smoke is, at the end of the day, they're being burnt in the trash and that's the end of those. Amen. So once again, we see that the Apostle Paul, he <clears throat> caused a great breakthrough for the gospel. And other people came on the back of that, as I said, Aquila, Apollos, even the Apostle John. Uh, Paul caused a great breakthrough there, preaching for over two years in that situation. And great and unusual miracle signs and wonders, as we've always found through the book of Acts, where it says that signs and wonders follow the preaching of the gospel. Amen. And you can see that quite clearly there in Acts chapter 19 and see. Um, now, of course, invariably, it causes a reaction from the demonic side of things uh, when that kind of a breakthrough is happening and those types of things are going. But remember, this is a huge um, center of pagan worship. I mean, it's just incredible that Paul got anything off the ground in Ephesus, let alone the whole province of, of, of Asia, having heard the word of God. I think it's absolutely remarkable and it can be commended, uh, you know, for uh, their work and what they did there those days in Ephesus. And it's my prayer that more and more that we would see the gospel of Jesus Christ being preached with so much power and so much strength that people would be taking handkerchiefs from our bodies uh, and taking them to those that are sick and possessed of evil spirits and they would be healed and delivered of those things. Now, I haven't got any prayer cloths with me tonight, um, but I can send a prayer through the screen uh, to you tonight and we can all uh, join together, um, you know, in prayer and see God's power move. You see, that's what we do. So we pray together. We call upon the name of Jesus and God will come and meet with you on the other end of the camera, wherever you happen to be. Uh, and that's what he is doing. All over the world, as people pray through the medium of Facebook uh, uh, and all the rest of it, the Internet, that people are getting touched by God. Amen. So, Father God, I pray tonight for people watching this broadcast, um, wherever they happen to be, whether they're in sick, they've got sickness, they've got pain, they're in difficulty. May they're being oppressed by evil spirits. I don't know what the thing is tonight, but I pray for you in the name of Jesus. And I come into agreement with every person watching this program tonight, whether you're live or you're watching the recording at somewhere else. We all come into agreement for each other and we pray, Lord, loose your power right now in the name of Jesus. I also pray for Ailey McLeod, whether those, um, the devil tried to trick her today. Lord, I just break that condemnation off of her today in Jesus' name. And Lord, thank you for your presence in your spirit, filling Ailey McLeod there in Scotland in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you brought it up. So the tarot cards went in the bin and now they've been burnt. So we just thank you tonight that God's kingdom extends and keeps on going and the devil's kingdom is falling and collapsing. And even things like that, you try to trick our sister, but guess what? God exposed it and it's been dealt with. Hallelujah. Amen. 
So let's keep on believing. Uh, Let's keep on praying and calling upon the name of Jesus because there's tremendous power in, in the power of prayer. Amen. Lord, everyone watching the program, wherever they're at, whatever they need, I pray into agreement, the Lord, that you would touch each one of them right now. Sickness and disease go in Jesus name. Peace come. I I, I rebuke insomnia and sleeplessness in the name of Jesus. That one that has difficulty sleeping. I pray that tonight you would sleep well. You would sleep deeply. You would sleep in great peace tonight in Jesus mighty name. Hallelujah. Uh, You know, if you want to write to me, you've got a private prayer request, for example, um, as people do sometimes. Let me just put my email address up on the screen. You write to that email address and Bridget and I, my wife, will get that. And we can pray uh, for you, um, you know, and then we, we don't keep these, by the way. You know, we pray over them and delete these emails. It's private. It's confidential. And it goes once we've got the information in our heads, you know, we'll pray over it and we'll get rid of it. So you can do that. Um, if you want to support the ministry tonight as well, you can do that. I'll put the PayPal link up on the screen. But again, the you know, the email and the PayPal are on the heading of every video like this that I do. So you can always find out where to write to or if you want to give, you, you know, you, you, you can do that uh, as well. So, Lord, just touch every person. I see this number of people saying I receive. Um, I guess that's to do with the sleeplessness thing, but I that's, it just came to me then. So I pray that deep abiding peace in the name of Jesus Christ, deep abiding peace in the name of Jesus Christ and sleep for all of my brothers and sisters who have a difficulty in that. I pray for you tonight that God will touch you and bring you that great and deep peace. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood that was shed upon the cross of Calvary. Thank you that you shed your blood so that we could be forgiven, that we could be cleansed, that we could be washed and enter into a new life with you, Jesus. Thank you for your holiness and your righteousness that was given to us, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for your peace that you grant us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I like that what uh, Matthias has put. He gives his beloved uh, sweet sleep. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you, Lord, for your presence tonight. Danielle says, I had trouble sleeping the last couple of years. I'm healed right now. Amen. Well, God bless you. Uh, Daphne says, I have a sinus headache. Come on, let's pray for Daphne. Uh, In Jesus' name right now, for Daphne Brooks, Lord, we pray, we rebuke. This sinus headache, may the sinuses drain in the name of Jesus Christ, right at the face and all down here. Let the sinuses drain out and all of the pressure and headache go in Jesus' mighty name. Daphne Brooks, everybody just agree now, speak it out loud where you are, for Daphne Brooks to be healed over there in Oklahoma in USA in Jesus' mighty name right now. Daphne, receive. The touch of God right now. Sinuses, I command you to drain and come and the headache to go right now, right now in the name of Jesus Christ. No more insomnia, no more sleeplessness in the name of Jesus on every person that needs that prayer answering in Jesus name. I speak that over you tonight breakthrough a command all pain to come out of people's bodies tonight in the name of jesus jesus pain in the spine pain in the hips uh, pain in in the back in the name of jesus nerve pain i rebuke nerve pain uh, tonight in the name of jesus i command that to go in jesus mighty name nerve pain nerve pain go stop in Jesus name, I just see this nerve pain for somebody. I command you to be released from that now tonight in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. No more pain. I command it to cease in Jesus name. If you're feeling God touching you, you feel the power of God touching you. Uh, just type it on the screen. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Even now you're confirming your word that you, Jesus, are the healer. Hallelujah. You, Jesus, are the healer. Carol says, I've got a lot of pain in my back. I command that pain 
in Jesus' name to come out of the back of Carol McCrory in Northern Ireland right now. Touch Carol's back, I pray, right now, Lord. Touch her mightily. Let that pain come out of that back in the name of Jesus. Dawn Rulus is feeling the power of God upon her where she is. God bless you, Dawn. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you're guiding Ailey, that you you, you showed her tonight that you got her out of that situation. Thank you, Lord. We don't need to over focus on it. It just it happens. It's dealt with. Hallelujah. We move on in the goodness of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Just touching people right now. Um, someone with a, with a dental or toothache pain in Jesus name. I speak healing over that person. And something to do with the eye as well. Somebody's eye in the name of Jesus. I don't know whether you're live or whether you're on the recording, but just be healed in Jesus' name. Daphne Brooks in Stillwell, Oklahoma says, thank you, Jesus. The pain is gone. Hallelujah. The pain is gone from our sister in Oklahoma. Well done to everybody that prayed. You see, when the people of God begin to pray, miracles begin to happen. Signs and wonders begin to break forth. God begins answering prayers and things begin to take place. I tell you, I feel the anointing here, the presence of God, like, or the atmosphere all around here is just, uh, I can feel this tingling, this presence, this power of God. So Lord, touch right now. Brenda Dando says, my eye. We pray for Brenda's eye in the name of Jesus. Lord, bring your healing now to Brenda Dando's eye there in North Dakota, USA. In Jesus' mighty name, touch your Lord right now. I speak healing to that eye now in Jesus' name. Come on, saints, agree with me right now. Let's combine our faith and our prayer power tonight like a missile and send it to Brenda in North Dakota right now to touch that eye in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You see this tremendous power as we begin to pray. Things begin to happen. Miracles begin to take place. Healing begins to flow as Danielle was put on there, you see. Healing begins to flow. Oh, in Jesus' mighty name. Matthias says, my mother-in-law is in hospital with an eye problem. So, Lord, we lift up Matthias's mother-in-law. We pray for her tonight. We pray for that eye problem and that that, that, that will be healed in Jesus' Uh, mighty name we thank you lord that the pain has come out of brenda's eye tonight right now as well so now brenda's pain free in her eye in jesus name daphne is pain free from the head and the sinus problem in jesus name thank you lord that you're you're moving even now as the people of god uh, begin to pray hallelujah thank you lord may just waves of your holy spirit just come upon people right where they are Filling them with peace, filling them with love, filling them with joy. Oh, Lord, fill them with your love and your presence and your power and your joy and your strength. Oh, Lord, fill them to overflowing, fill them to overflowing, fill them to overflowing tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. More of you, Lord, more of you. Touch your people. Father God, release that fire through the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing tonight. You're blessing your people. You're healing your people. You're encouraging your people. You're opening their eyes and their heart to your truth, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing uh, here tonight. I command confusion to go right now. Confusion, come off of that one that's been listening in Jesus' name. Again, I'm not sure if you're live or on the recording but somebody been very confused and I command that to come off of your head and mind now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. All confusion go. Lord, we ask for clarity to come to Tyra Roberts in the name of Jesus. Lord, let your spirit of truth just fall upon her tonight. May she see and hear clearly. May she perceive and understand what you want to say to her tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I speak peace today of every person. I've been saying it and I'll say it again. Uh, receive the fruit of the Spirit, which is peace. Hallelujah. Love, joy, peace. Hallelujah. Just receive tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing for people. 
Thank you for your word tonight from Acts chapter 19. Thank you that we know and we can see that you can do unusual and extraordinary miracles through the body of Christ, through the Apostle Paul, who was killing the church when he started. Wasn't one of the original apostles. And yet you used him so mightily that he shook the whole province of Asia. And that so that potentially two million people heard the word of God in two years in that region because of this man, Paul. And Lord, I pray that we would all see that it's not how we start, it's how we finish. That we would all see it's Christ in us, the hope of glory. It's you flowing through your church, through your people, through the body that can reach the world around us. So don't think of yourself tiny and small in that way. Know that the great God of heaven lives on the inside of you. In and of ourselves, in the flesh, no, we can't do anything. But... If God is with us, then who can be against us? That's what the scripture says. The Apostle Paul said, I no longer live. Uh, it is Christ who lives in and through me. Paul learned to die to himself and allow Jesus to live in and through him. And that's how he managed to do such great works all around uh, on his missionary journeys, because he submitted his life wholly and totally to the Lord Jesus Christ. He'd repented of his sins. And he'd moved on from that place to be and he was filled with the Holy Spirit and began ministering with great power, you know, and truly, you know, the only one in the Bible, to my mind, in the in the book of Acts that seems to even rival Paul with these great miracles is Peter. Now, I'm not sure what the rest of them did. It's not easy to tell. But you can see even when he wasn't one of the original ones to, to be called out by Jesus, even when he'd started badly and was killing the church, God turned him all around and was using him in this mighty way. And he's preaching in the power of the Holy Spirit right next to the seventh wonder of the world, supposedly, the, the temple of Artemis there in Ephesus, and yet power of God broke forth. doesn't matter what temples people erect or what statues they put up or whatever else. Jesus is bigger than all of them, and the word of God will break through eventually the gospel will prevail and people will come to faith in the Lord Jesus because he has the name that is above every other name and that his name every knee must bow and every tongue confess to the glory of God the Father so let's be encouraged today to keep on sharing the good news of Jesus the gospel wherever we get the opportunity Maybe you're talking over the fence to your neighbour. Maybe you're on the telephone with a friend. Maybe you're on the internet like this, sharing whatever. Whether you're down the grocery store, you know, over the vegetables or something like that, you know. Just keep on keeping on. Keep telling about Jesus and keep sharing the good news. Amen, my friends. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. As always, it is uh, lovely to be uh, with you. And... Uh, look forward to our next broadcast um <clears throat> i probably won't be doing one uh, tomorrow because i'm going somewhere tomorrow but um <clears throat> probably the next day but that will be acts chapter 20 and of course i I'll, I'll, i will also be coming back as well with some of our other special programs like uh, this sunday we had the sunday night special which tend to be more of a uh, prayer ministry and healing program we we'll continue to do that. Although we've had a bit of a healing program tonight. Uh, three people have been healed tonight. Uh, Carol McCrory said pain in my back has gone. So Carol McCrory's pain in her back has gone. Daphne Brooks's pain in her head, the sinus headache in that has gone. Brenda Dando's uh, eye pain has gone. Anybody else got a testimony tonight as we've prayed? There's three people that have been healed tonight. Um, and so, um, you know, let us know. Pray for my daughter, says Susan Banks of Velisa. She's been attacked and bullied uh, through the daycare where her children attend and needed complete protection of her children under government services. She's so broken and hurts her 40th birthday today. Well, God, we lift up Velisa to you today and we pray that, Lord, that you'll meet with her. It's her 40th birthday. Lord, we ask that you would meet with her, that salvation would come to her, that she'd come to know you in a powerful, living and dynamic way, that she would be filled with your spirit, that she'd have just a great touch from heaven upon her life today uh, in the name of Jesus. And we speak protection over the entire uh, family there in the name of Jesus, over the, over the children, over 
uh, Velisa and over Susan as well. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you, Lord. Touch even now, right now. Uh, and she's probably in New Zealand, I would imagine. So uh, distance badge tonight goes to Susan. They're down in New Zealand, I believe, tonight viewing from there. So God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Like I say, thanks for tuning in. Remember the email address. Remember, do you want to support the ministry? Do you want to give something? Um, there's the PayPal link that's on the link of every video. Um, do think about supporting, even if it's a small gift or a one-off gift. You know, you, you know, think about that. Um, and that would be helpful. She's already a Christian, but that's great news. Um, we pray that she just really receives a touch from God today, that Valisa really gets touched uh, today by the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing all over the world in people's lives, that you never slumber, or you never sleep. You <coughs> don't go to sleep. Now, we want people to sleep tonight on the program, but God doesn't sleep. He's active. He's on duty. He's always there. <coughs> and Jesus ever lives, the Bible says, to make intercessional prayers on our behalf isn't that wonderful to know that that jesus is always praying for you and your family for your loved ones your friends your situation that jesus is always there call upon his name there's nothing like going direct you know go direct to jesus and talk to him yourself close your door get there and say jesus i want to talk to you and start and, and just open up and get, give your prayers and your love to jesus and then have a listen to see what he says to you, you know, see what impression comes to your heart. Read your Bible. Just get into his presence. Amen. But Lord, we thank you tonight that you healed Carol McCrory. Yeah, you healed Daphne Brooks and you healed Brenda Dando. <clears throat> so all these people tonight have been touched by the power of the living God. We thank you, Lord. And we give you all the praise and all the glory that you have that we have to give to you so that you can always get all honour and praise. We love you, Father. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. We love you for everything that you've done for us and continue to do for us <clears throat> right up to the point where we cross from this world to the next to be with you or you return to the earth, whichever happens first in our each of our lifetimes. Either way, we know that you have a place for us and uh, you know you're waiting to welcome us into that situation in the meantime let's be busy about the gospel you know the, jesus gave the uh, the body of christ the church some instructions and he said this <clears throat> he said go into all the world and preach the gospel heal the sick cast out devils and make disciples uh, and that's what um the church is to do and he said but before you do that receive power from on high be baptized with the holy spirit it's quite straightforward really the mission of the church evangelize the world and pray for healing and deliverance and teach people to be disciples of jesus done in the love and the power of the holy spirit i don't think that's too complicated it really church has complicated the life out of it at times but that is truly our call as the believers in this world. Do, my dear friends, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Uh, Israel has had over 300 rockets launched at it uh, last night by Hamas from the Gaza Strip and everything else. Over 300 rockets. Uh, people have been killed. Uh, they've even hit Jerusalem uh, last night. Uh, Temple Mount was on fire in one place, I know. Um, so there's, there's a lot happening there in the Middle East. So do pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Do pray for Israel, that they would be uh, protected from all that's been going on. They have retaliated uh, against the, the, the launch sites. I mean, I've seen videos of, of the rockets going out from Gaza, somebody filming out of a window and they, all them shooting out and firing uh, towards Israel. Um, that we, we need peace to take place on in there so that there's no more loss of life. So, Lord, we speak that peace over the nation of Israel and over you know, the Palestinian people as well, that there would be peace and that people would not want to uh, get into a fight with each other, that they would choose to dwell together 
Lord, we pray for that in the name of Jesus. I'm not trying to be political, but the Bible commands us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. It commands us to pray for Israel. And so that's what we do there. And we speak that blessing over all concerned. There'll be no more loss of life. Be Lord, that's what we pray. Because at the moment, it doesn't look good. The Israelis are massing tanks and things like that. They may even be going into Gaza on a ground um, incursion. And that would not result in good things. So God bless you uh, tonight, wherever you are around the world. I pray that you will be blessed. I pray that you are protected, you and your family. I pray that you have everything that you need. You know, you have food and you have shelter, you have water, that you are in health, um, that you are encouraged, that you have peace and joy wherever you are around the world. Know this, Jesus loves you and he'll never stop loving you. Jesus is the pearl of great price. He is the treasure buried in the field. He's the greatest gift there is. Let us embrace Jesus and be so thankful for what we do have with him. And we'll continue to pray that this mission of spreading the gospel will continue all over the world. And as each of us plays our part, it all fits together, doesn't it, to do the whole thing. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And I will see you again another day. God bless. Bye.